The King's Treasure Once upon a time, there was once a poor farmer named Abdul Karim who lived in a sheltered valley with his wife, Ziba, the beautiful one, and his two children. The valley was surrounded by beautiful hills. The hillside was covered with fine gardens in which grew peaches, grapes, mulberries, and other delicious fruits in great profusion. Abdul Karim was a poor laborer in the valley, receiving no wages, and merely being paid in grain and cloth sufficient for the daily needs of his family. He knew nothing of money except by its name. One day his landlord paid him ten rials for the work that he did. This was a huge amount to Abdul Karim. After completing his work, he ran home to his wife and said, Look, Ziba, here is money for you, and he placed the money on the tablecloth for her to see. His wife and children were delighted. How shall we spend all of this money? Perhaps, I should go to the famous city of Mashhad that is twenty miles from here. I will place two rials on the holy shrine of Imam Reza and I will then visit the bazaars to buy what our children desire. Said Abdul Karim. I would like you to buy me some silk for a new dress, said his wife Ziba. I want a horse, said his son Yusuf. I would like an Indian handkerchief and a pair of gold slippers, said his daughter Fatima. You will have it all by tomorrow night said the father confidently. He immediately started his journey with a big walking stick and left the valley. As he walked down the mountains to the land below, Abdul Karim say the city of Mashhad shining bright. He was lost in wonder as he saw the sight of the beautiful domes, where the roofs were glittered in gold and minarets. The priests were calling people from the top to attend the prayers. As he reached the gates of the shrine, he asked the old priest if he may enter the ground of the holy shrine. Yes, my son, the priest replied. Go in and give what you can spare to the temple, and God will reward you. Abdul Karim walked into the great court and saw the number of worshippers from every city in Asia. He was astonished and stared in a gaze when he saw the riches of the temple that was filled with jewels, carpets, silks, gold ornaments, and with great humility, he places two rials on the sacred tomb. He was only left with eight rials. Upon completing his task, he left for the bazaar. He walked through the noise and the crowded streets to reach the bazaar. He saw the fruit sellers in one place. In another area he saw men selling pots and pans. He then saw the jewelers, the bakers, and the butchers. Each trade had their own spot at the bazaar. He ten reached the silk sellers and looked for materials for his wife. After much picking and choosing, he found a beautiful piece of purple silk with an embroidered border. I will take this, he said to the trader. How much for this piece? The trader replied that as a new customer, I will only ask you for 200 rials. Anyone else would have to pay 400 rials. 200 rials, said Abdul Karim in shock. I am sure you might have made a mistake. Do you mean rials like this? Abdul took some rials out of his pocket to show the trader. Yes, I do. Replied the trader. And let me tell you that this is a very affordable price. Abdul Karim told the trader that he only had eight rials and had to buy other thing including a horse, a sword, a handkerchief, and a pair of golden slippers for his family. The trader became angry with Abdul Karim and chased him out of the shop. I had been wasting my time showing you all of my beautiful silks. Get out of my shop. Said the trader. Abdul Karim was disappointed and left for the horse market. There he found that the lowest price horse was 250 rials. The horse traders made fun of him when they saw he only had eight rials. They told him to buy a toy donkey for his son. As for the sword, it would cost thirty rials. The golden slippers would cost a few hundred rials and the handkerchief would cost twelve rials. Abdul Karim was disappointed and returned home. Along the way back, he met with a beggar who was crying. The beggar said to him, Sir, please give me something. Tomorrow is Friday, the Sabbath. He that helps the poor will be blessed by God a hundredfold. Adbul Karim, filled with sadness, said to the beggar that, of all the people that I met today, you are the only one that I can deal with. Here, take my eight rials. This is all that I have left. Use this money in service of God, and perhaps I will get them back a hundredfold. He then wrapped up the eight rials and passed into the beggar. The beggar then promised to return the money back one day in a hundredfold. Abdul Karim, left back for home. Upon reaching his cottage, his son Yusuf, came running up to him. Where is my horse and sword, father, said the son as he cried. Where is my handkerchief and golden slippers, father, said his daughter. And where is my silk, asked his wife. Abdul Karim told them the story of what had happened and that he gave the eight rials to a beggar. 
His wife got very angry and went to the landlord to complain. The landlord was so furious that he yelled out to Abdul Karim. Which silly man gave his eight rials to a beggar? Send him to me. Abdul Karim then went to see the landlord. The landlord said, you must fancy yourself a big spender, Abdul Karim. I never give more than a copper to a beggar, but you, O oh Excellency, gave the beggar silvers. As a punishment, I want you to go to the desert and start digging for water. You shall not return until you find it, said the landlord. Abdul Karim left for the desert and for days under the hot blazing sun, he dug a deep well and came upon a brass vessel. In the well, he found lots of shiny jewels and dazzling gems. Abdul Karim, not knowing the value of the treasure that he found, but remembered that he had seen some of these things for sale in the bazaar in Mashhad. He dug a little more deeper and found some water for the landlord. He took the water to the landlord who was pleased and he gave Abdul Karim a well-deserved rest. Upon the first opportunity, Abdul Karim took the treasure that he found to the bazaar. With a pocket full of jewels, he went straight to the jewel trader and said, do you want to buy more stones like yours? The trader said, yes, do you have some? I have a pocket full of them, said Abdul Karim. You have a pocket full of pebbles, said the trader and laughed. Abdul Karim took out the jewels from his pocket and showed it to the trader. The trader was shocked. The trader shouted, this man is a thief. His pockets are filled with diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and pearls of great value. I am sure that he stole some that belong to the king, which he is now trying to sell. Call the authorities. Abdul Karim was unaware of the the law of the land states the tanny treasures found becomes the property of the king. Abdul Karim was searched and had his jewels confiscated from him and had him and his family put under capital guard for further investigation. Coincidentally, the king had been having some dreams three nights in a row, where the holy prophet told him, Abbas. Protect and favor my friend and servant. One the third night, the king took courage and said to the prophet, Who is thy friend and servant? The answer came Tati King, he is the poor laboring man. Despite his poverty, he gave one-fifth at the holy shrine in Mashhad and now that he had found the king's treasure, they have bound him in your city. The next morning, the king rushed to meet Abdul Karim. He saw the poor Abdul seated on a camel, with his arms tied tightly. Walking behind the camel were his children and his wife crying. They were guarded by the foot soldiers. The king immediately made the camel kneel down and untied his hands. With tears running down his face, Abdul Karim knelt before the king and pleaded for his dear ones, saying, Please imprison me, but let these innocent ones be free. The king lifted Abdul from the ground and said, I have come to honor you and not imprison you. When you have rested, you shall return to your village not as a prisoner but as a wealthy man. The smiling king further said, I have already prepared a silk dress for your wife Zeba, a horse for your son, and the handkerchief and golden slippers for your daughter. I am aware of what happened and I am here to honor what I saw in my dreams. In life you must always remember that. When you help someone it is an opportunity for you to grow as a person. Sometimes in life, it is not about the money, but the man who does more than he is paid for will always be paid back for more than he does. That is all for this video. If you like the video don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.